Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today with another one of those collage master boards that um, I've been doing tons and tons of lately since seeing Joey Defee do hers. Um, and what I thought we could do today is just have a bit of a play using some napkin. And then I've got some of my um, painted doily here, which has been painted with some metallic gold and also some metallic blue. And I've kind of mixed them in a bit. And also incorporating some sewing pattern paper. Hopefully it's going to provide a really nice grungy sort of background um, that we can then just kind of play with and, yeah, make some bits out of or, you know, kind of, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see how it turns out. Obviously that will kind of probably, um, you know, dictate what we're going to actually use it for. But I thought that, first of all, I would just kind of adhere some um, sewing pattern paper onto it. And that will hopefully kind of really grunge up the whole look of the book page and, you know, give it a really good sort of coating. So just going to do that. Now I'm going to use, I've got here some clear gesso. I haven't ever used clear gesso for um, uh, decoupage before, which is essentially what we're doing is, you know, decoupaging the, oops, the sewing pattern onto the book page so I don't know whether this is going to be 100% successful um but I did you know did google that this is going to work and you know touch with it it seemed to suggest that it would work so let's just get on and see how we'll you know how we get on um I'm using obviously just a big wide paintbrush to apply the gesso and yeah just kind of give the whole thing a good coat in like this and yeah I think what I'll do I'll cover the entire you know collaged kind of book page piece with the sewing pattern and then we'll probably add some other things after that so we'll just kind of yeah start with the sewing pattern paper and then go from there now you can probably see this is going on quite crinkly quite you know quite creased Personally, I'm not worried about that. I think it's going to give sort of a lot more interest and texture. Obviously, you know, if that's the type of thing that would bother you, you may want to take a bit more care with how you're, you know, sticking your sewing pattern paper down if you were doing something like this. But like I say, I mean, I'm really not worried, to be honest, because actually the more, you know, the more interest in the texture, then the more interest in the finished piece is going to be. So I'm just going to tear this off here so sorry that it's off camera it's such a huge piece it's quite hard to fit it on screen and then I'm just going to apply more more of the sewing pattern paper across you know the next sort of layer of the book page so we'll just gesso this on so yeah this is clear acrylic gesso as opposed to kind of the white gesso so you know like I say I don't really know, you know, I don't really kind of know much about gesso and things like that. I know I've said this loads of times in videos, but, you know, this is all very new products to me and techniques to me. So I'm very much learning, learning as I go. Um, you know, so lots of you guys, I'm sure, probably know much more about it than I do, to be honest. Um, but, you know, we'll just kind of see. I wanted to use the clear gesso as opposed to white gesso because I'm hoping that that way I'm going to still be able to see the book page, which so far so good. You know, I can see plenty of book page so far. So hopefully I've picked the right, you know, the right medium to use. Okay. I'll just go in with another sheet of the sewing pattern paper and you know I'm just leaving it overhanging at the edges and I will obviously go back in and neaten the edges up in a moment so just want to really get the um, paper kind of attached to the page first so yeah right I've got a um, bit here that kind of needs a bit of extra help so I'll just put some more gesso down here so as I can press that down as I say, I mean, this is such a huge um, piece of paper now, obviously, now that all those book pages are, you know, glued together. I'm actually struggling really quite a lot to fit it onto the desk. So I do apologise that it's not, you know, it's not all on the desk. 
well I mean it is all on the desk but that it's not all visible um I just can't really kind of do a lot about that I'm afraid so um yeah hopefully you can just see enough to you know to give you an idea of what I'm doing now here as you can see I haven't got enough in the sewing pattern to you know coat the whole or cover the whole page so I'm going to do it in two stages I'm going to just put this piece here and then I'll just tear off a piece to coat or cover the corner so we'll just go in with this and I mean like I say you know it's it's got a lot of wrinkles and things like that which I'm hoping actually will make this a lot more interesting to look at and I'm not you know I'm not getting kind of overly obsessed with trying to smooth them out or get it on smoothly or anything like that I'm just you know just going for it with all those wrinkles you know coming out where they're coming out so we we'll just put this piece down here like that okay Right, so that's that piece. And then I'm just going to tear this edge off here. Okay. Like that. And I would just pop that piece, oops, down here on the edge, down there. So yeah, hopefully the whole thing then is covered with the sewing pattern paper. Okay, don't think it really matters which way round that is, but just in case. Okay, like that. So that's looking quite nice so far. Now I've just got a little bit here. So again, just going to take some more of that pattern paper and just fill in now this little edge here. Like that. I mean, as I say, I haven't ever decoupaged with... Um, you know gesso before so I mean it's just really fingers crossed that this is all going to stick down so yeah I mean normally I would use Mod Podge I actually haven't got any Mod Podge at the moment so that's the main reason for using this um but yeah I mean I googled you know can I use gesso because I thought that I had used or had heard somebody say before that you can so I thought you know well ideal because I haven't got any um Mod Podge and you know hopefully this is going to work right now I'm debating do I actually go for this now um or shall I dry this off before putting the next layers on I think probably I might as well just go for it now so again I'm going to just take my doily and tear off strips now I don't probably want you know huge great big bits so I'm going to tear it off you know because I don't necessarily want that middle piece which is you know essentially blank um so I'm just going to tear off sections of the doily itself. Yeah, and probably, you know, probably want to do some in smaller chunks rather than larger chunks, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, perhaps, I'll, perhaps I should split that blue. Okay, well, that's made quite an interesting kind of pattern for the blue. Right, then I have got this doily, which again, I thought colour-wise, isn't this awesome, you know, lovely colour. With the sewing pattern paper, with that doily, I just thought the colours are really, really good together, aren't they? So I'm just going to separate this out. Again, I should now use that sellotape trick, but my sellotape's in the drawer. And I'm just, I'm in the drawer right beside my hand, so it's not like I would have to go anywhere to get it, but... Oh, it would be quicker, wouldn't it, to actually just reach into the drawer and get, get the sellotape. But that would be far too easy, of course. So this is what they call a three-ply napkin. So that means it's just got three, three layers. So I just want to get rid of those layers. I'm going to have to um, get the sellotape in because I cannot separate that third, third and final layer. Oops, I haven't really got any sellotape, so I'm just going to use double-sided tape, which will work just as well. And then all I want to do is go onto my napkin here. And then you can just pull up like that. I mean, how much quicker was that than trying to actually separate it? Honestly, I should have just done that all along, shouldn't I? And then you can get your other layers off ready to decoupage that on 
Okay, right. Just going to put that tissue to the side because I might, you know, use that for sort of mopping up things. Okay, so with my napkin now, now I have to say, I see people do this really quite often where they dab in with some water to separate the patterns. So let me just move this to one side and we'll just separate our napkin out doing that technique. Again, I haven't ever done this before, so fingers crossed it's going to go okay. So just going to get some water on the desk and yeah, just theory is I should just be able to go round and then the napkin should, you know, break off or tear, tear apart quite easily. Like I say, I have never done this before. Who knows whether it's going to work. But I have watched other people do it lots of times and it always looks like it's, you know, works wonderfully. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to go in here, I think. Okay. Right. So I'm just separa separating it out. So that I've got, um, you know, separate pieces to be able to decoupage down rather than like the whole big napkin piece. Like here, I can just then separate out, you know, the butterfly, for instance, and then hopefully just, you know, decoupage that butterfly on. So that's the idea. Okay, so just tear around where I've got that sort of wet wet napkin. Oops, just get that dark piece off. Okay. Woo. Okay, that's another piece. And then let's have a look. So from this section here, well, I guess we could have another, another butterfly, couldn't we? I mean, these butterflies, they're just obviously screaming out to be used in this way, aren't they? So, yeah. I don't know who I saw do this um, technique with the water first, to be honest, but I've seen lots of people do it. So, yeah, I'm just late to the party as usual, you know, having never used this technique before. But, yeah. I mean, I've seen Sagita at Sagita's Coffee Stains. I've seen her do it lots of times. Um, I think I've probably seen Artie Mays do it. I've seen, oh, Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. I think I've seen her do it. Seen, seen most people do it, to be honest. So yeah, I'm seriously, seriously late to the party with this. Okay. Okie dokie, oops. So that's another butterfly. Um, again, might just use these blue flowers down here. So again, just kind of like put the water in to be able to separate that out. Okay. Like that. Okay. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it round and grab some bits from this side. So probably the same, the same pieces really. So again, just go in and, you know, take out those blue flowers from the bottom. I should have probably done this first because this is probably like watching paint dry, watching me do this to be honest. But anyway, we'll just, just go in and do this. Okay. Okie dokie, and a bit there, right, let's just tear that. So I hope everyone's having a good day. Have you been making some of those book page, you know, the whole book page collage sheets? They're so addictive and, you know, no sooner have I kind of done one than my mind is kind of spinning with other things that I want to try with them. So uh, yeah, if you haven't tried them, honestly, give them a go they are super fun very addictive so be warned you will be you will be hooked you know if you're anything like me you'll be you'll be hooked I'm wanting to do kind of more and more and more of them but yeah they're really really good fun and of course they're a fantastic way to use up book pages that we all have tons and tons of don't we so 
yeah, really good, um, you know, good thing to use. Right, let's go down there. Okay, you will be pleased to know that I am nearly done with this now. So I think I have actually got some of these napkins in a bigger size. So I might have a look in a second and just see if I have, because it might be quite fun to, you know, mix it up and do some in a bigger size as well. Sometimes it doesn't make that much difference to the actual pattern, if you see what I mean. You know, the button on the biggest button, butterfly on the bigger size napkin, it might not really be much of a difference to the size on the smaller one. Um, but yeah, I might have a look in a second because I'm sure I have got these in a bigger size, which, you know, might just be quite interesting then to be able to have the two different sizes going on. So, okay. This. And I mean, again, you know, I really don't have to be too worried. I mean, if this is kind of tearing in, you know, what sort of looks like, oops, that's not quite the place that I'd wanted to tear it. I mean, it really doesn't matter once it's stuck down. And, you know, of course, we will be decorating these pieces up. We're not just going to be leaving them. So it's not really going to be particularly obvious, you know, if things are not quite, you know, torn out to any sort of precision really well I mean I'm hoping it's not going to I'm hoping it's not going to make much difference who knows it might make a massive difference and I'll uh, have to eat my words but hopefully hopefully it's not going to be a problem right oops so just take that down there Okie dokie, so that looks really pretty, doesn't it? And uh, yeah, okay. Right, so let me just quickly clean this up. Sorry about the state of my desk. I have been obviously doing other videos and working on other things, you know, up to the wire, as it were. So um, yeah, my desk is kind of quite messy now from the other things that I've been doing. So I do apologise for that. Right. So we'll bring these in. I mean, obviously there's not, you know, there's not a huge amount of pieces here. So definitely I probably want to, you know, bring in another napkin if nothing else. And then these flowers, because they've got kind of a square edge, I'm thinking kind of put them underneath the doily, which will hopefully soften those edges because all the flowers were actually from the edge of the, the napkin, if that makes sense. So they've all obviously got like a straight you know, straight edge to them. So again, just going to take my gesso and I'm just going to paste the gesso straight onto that sewing pattern and put the napkin down. And like here, for instance, I'm going to put this piece of doily just coming off at that edge like that. Okay. And then should we have like a butterfly here? I'll just paste that butterfly on. Okay, that looks really nice, doesn't it? So then I think I'll go with all the um, flower pieces first, actually. Like that. And then just... Again, put some doily down here, you know, just again, sort of disguising where it's got that straight edge. So like that. Okay. Uh, right, let's bring in another, another piece of the floral. I was going to have it sideways on, but that's just really peculiar, isn't it? Is it? Or does it look okay? Sometimes it's just hard to tell, isn't it, to be honest? Do you know? I think it looks all right, actually. Okay, let's just paste some more of the gesso and place that down there. Okay. And then again, just go in with the doily. Whoa, whoa. Like that. Oops, I've just got a little piece of doily there. Just turn that off. Okay. And 
then the final lot of flowers for the time being anyway but I might have looked like I say and see if I've got some bigger pieces of this particular napkin or you know I mean I can always bring in another smaller one and just do some more like that because I'm thinking you know we may want some more of the blue okay and then just oh I might have to use a very small piece of napkin here so yeah let's just kind of have that there Oops. Okie dokie, right, and shall we have a butterfly maybe here? Like that. Oh gosh, that butterflies. I mean, I'm not too worried if I'm creasing these, like I say, but obviously, oh my goodness, do you see what's happened to that butterfly now? Awful, awful, awful. Right, let's get rid of that. And this is why I tend to use the acetate normally when I'm decoupaging because I am quite heavy handed. And so, as you saw there, you know, I just then tore that butterfly piece completely. So, you know, pressing with the acetate, it just kind of creates some distance between you and the, the napkin. And it just allows me to be, you know, less likely to tear things. So, I mean, I'm nearly tearing this again which oh my goodness and I have torn those flowers now so yeah just um, <laughs> a little tip there if you're a little bit on the heavy-handed side like I am you know the acetate definitely definitely is helpful um, yeah definitely helpful so I might just have that little bit of doily just here And then just have this butterfly here, I think. Okay. Right. Okay. Oops. I'm going to now just quickly um, check out if I've got some more of those napkins. So I'll be back in a moment. Right. So I'm back. I couldn't find any um, of these napkins in the smaller... Um, oh, sorry, the bigger size, which was weird because I was, you know, sure that I did have them. Um, but that's absolutely fine. But what I did find, so I've pulled out another napkin the same size, but I also have this. I mean, check out this napkin. How gorgeous is this? And of course, it's all blues. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, again, with that water, tear out some other elements from, you know, this napkin that's the same and then this one. And then I'll be back. I won't bore you with kind of my tearing. So I will be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm back now and I have torn out some other bits and pieces to be using. So I've got like a whole bunch more of the butterflies, which, you know, they just look super gorgeous. So let's just get placing them down. I've got that small one from that sort of all butterflies napkin. And then I've got another bigger one over here. So let's just pop that one down up there really 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 trying not to overthink my placement here and just literally chuck things down oops okay okay so let me just move these bits of napkin uh doily sorry move the bits of doily and then i've got like a whole section of butterflies which just is gorgeous isn't it so i'm thinking actually i might put that down here so again, just kind of paste, paste the gesso on here and then just place the whole napkin piece down. Just need to try and be careful here because I'm not using the acetate, so I don't want to now tear this as well. You know, some of the napkin pieces would be more forgiving than others. Obviously tearing, whoa, like I did just then. That's just now ruined that butterfly completely. So yeah, I think... I think that's probably enough of the painting over that. Uh, right, so then I just tore out some more of the flowers. So again, I'm just going to turn this around so that I can actually even fit it, fit it onto the desk for actually, you know, even sticking the pieces on. So there we go. Okie dokie. And then let's just have maybe some flowers off here, maybe to the side. Oops. Okay. Like 
that. Okay, and shall we? Oh, I don't know now. Let me just turn it round and see where where else could do with some flowers, maybe. I mean, we could just have some more here, I guess. Have a sort of super florally piece here. You know, super florally section, perhaps I should say. So, those there. I mean, they're not, not straight or anything, but again, just try not to get too caught up in, you know, how things are going on. It's just all about the actual getting things on in the first place. So, again, just going to pop that butterfly on there. And then let's have some more doily going on. So I might just have to tear this doily into slightly smaller pieces here. So we'll just put some down here. Oops. Okay, and perhaps we'll have a little bit, a little bit here. Or we could have it there. Mm -hmm. See, I've gone now into overthinking mode. And, you know, the second you do that, sort of... Uh, you know, you lose momentum, I suppose, don't you? And it all becomes very slow. Very slow going. Right, let's put some more pieces over here. So again, we've got some more of the napkin, uh, the doily. I don't know why I'm constantly trying to call it napkin. So I might just put some more here. Like that. Let's have some maybe here with another butterfly up there so yeah let's just oh I've got some more blue flowers actually I nearly nearly missed those so yeah let's have those over here I think I can just paste those down and then in a minute I will go and obviously dry this I mean it's drying quite well already actually um that gesso seems a little bit quicker you know faster drying than Mod Podge so that's definitely a good a good thing um well i mean mod podge dries quite quickly actually but it kind of has like a soggy soggy under layer if you know what i mean for quite a while i find but yeah this seems to be drying pretty quickly so okay and then we've just got another couple of bits of the napkin so i'm just going to not napkin doily doily again called it napkin um, maybe another little piece up here. Oops, should probably put the gesso down first rather than just trying to gesso over it. Okay. Yeah, and then we've just got a couple more pieces here. So let's just go in here, I think. So, oops. Okay. Just put that like that. And then got another another couple of butterflies. So we've got a small one here. Let's just pop that in here. Okay. And then we've got a couple more of the big ones. Oh, a couple more. We've actually got three more. Oops, don't want that, that way around, actually. Let's have it this way around. Okay. And, oh, we've got some more doily again, look. Oh, this has actually gone a surprisingly long way, to be honest. Um, yeah, quite pleasantly surprised at how far this has all stretched. So, um, right. Another big butterfly. Perhaps we will have over, oh, where should we have it? Maybe up there. Let's have it here, in fact, in this sort of section here. And it doesn't matter if it's overhanging because I can just cut that off. So there we go. And yep, one more. Oh, one more plus one more piece of doily. So the doily, uh, where should we have that? Maybe here. Okay. And then the final big big butterfly I think let's have <gasps> oh where 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 should we have it here I think yeah 
Okay, so I'm going to go and dry this all off and then we'll, you know, come back and we'll have a play and see what we can do with this. So I'll be back in a minute. Right, I'm back. This is actually several days later, actually. In fact, it's several weeks later. Um, it's just been sat on my floor ever since, <laughs> um, you know, leaving it to dry. But this is how it's turned out. So this is what we've got. And it's got this wonderful kind of... Um, like stable kind of effect really now because it's obviously quite thick it's got lots of layers it's got the gesso it's got the um you know the uh sewing pattern paper and it's got the napkins and the doily and things so yeah it's got really quite a stable kind of thick uh feel to it and what i thought we could do is just make a really super grungy journal from it um with like a sort of wrap around cover um partially because actually it's just got this natural kind of fold lines so I thought, well, let's just go with how it is, to be honest. So all I'm going to do is just literally fold it in just here, like that. And of course, if you can tell, I mean, you know, I'm hoping that this is all squashed into the camera, but it is actually quite a big piece. So I, you know, I realise I'm having problems kind of squashing it in. I'm going to obviously trim this edge down and then I'm going to obviously trim it to make it, you know, more of a sort of book size piece, really. So, yeah, I probably want to cut it um, kind of like roughly a, across here, I think. So we'll just go straight across there. Like that. Okay. Okie dokie. And obviously I'm going to tidy this all up afterwards, but I'm not, you know, I'm not overly worried. So... I've got this section which I've cut off, which of course I'm not going to bin that. I will keep it because we might, you know, we might do some other things with that. So yeah, this is going to be like effectively my spine. Um, I'm going to trim this edge down. Actually, I think what I'll do, just going to get rid of this edge, you know, with the sewing pattern paper. So I'll just tear that off like that. And then I might be able to just fold this over it's narrower like that and then form a pocket there which would be quite a good you know good way to use that so that's all folded over okay so as I say I mean I'm going for quite a grungy kind of look here um, and ho yeah hopefully it's going to just you know turn out really really scrumptious and then we're going to have this as sort of a wrap around so again I want to just leave a little bit of space because then if this expands and grows, you know, you're going to want just a little bit more kind of room there for it to expand and grow with it. So again, just going to kind of tear this excess sewing pattern paper off here, off the edge. So like that. And then I think what I'll do is again, do that same sort of oops, foldy over like pocket type thing. Just going to check how that looks. Yeah, so I mean that's still got plenty of the butterflies going on and then we've got obviously the pretty butterflies as well on the inside which is, you know, really rather nice, isn't it? So obviously as you can see, I mean I've got this, um, uh, you know, book page pattern going on inside as well. Um, quite happy with that. I'm just wondering whether I want to, you know, add any other anything really, some more book page or anything else. Um I've got here, you know, like some of the header from some sheet music. I mean, I always absolutely love the look of the sheet music headers. So I might just put that down. Let's just check where this is going. Yeah, I might just put that down somewhere. That looks quite nice along there. So I might just, yeah, glue that straight in. So we'll just, oops, let me just unclog my glue. And then, you know, like I say, I mean, this has got quite a thickish feel to it anyway. Um, but obviously, you know, this is going to just reinforce it further. So, you know, and I think you can just never have too many layers because, I mean, you want it to be as robust as possible, don't you? You know, you don't want it flimsy and sort of falling apart. You want it to be, you know, nice and strong and sturdy so that you've got a piece that's going to hopefully last, you know, for a long time. So let me just grab a wipe. My wipe's just over the other side. Right. Just grabbed my wipe here. Okay, so I'm just going to stick that down 
there like that. Okay. Right. And then I think what I'll do, I'm going to trim everywhere on the bottom where the sewing pattern paper is still hanging out. And then I'm going to take it across to the sewing machine. Now, just before I do that, I'm just going to check whether I want to put anything else in here. You know, like we did with that other piece of the sheet music. So I've got this, which has got a little bird on it. I mean, that's quite nice. Um, the only thing is, yeah, the bird's just getting completely lost in there. Uh, yeah, that might just be a waste of that, what's, you know, quite a pretty, you know, pretty sort of piece of paper. So let me just spread this out with the glue spreader. Okay. Right, let me see what other book page I've got laying around. Ah, I've got my, what is my favourite book page at the moment from this gorgeous antique book over here, or just got some more of that navel book page. Now, the only thing is, this is quite a thin book page, so I'm kind of thinking, is it going to actually, you know, just be very see-through on there? Uh, not too bad. Let me just, let me just fold it in half. Okay. Yeah, just wondering whether we might just, you know, have something like that going on. Just here, maybe. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this top off. Just across here. Okay. And then we'll just glue this one down. Like that. Okay, right, let's just pop this one down here, like that, okay. Right, let's just now glue that down, like that. So yeah, what I'm going to do is take this across to the sewing machine and I'm going to just stitch it in a way that I've got these folded down as pockets. And I'll probably just stitch around the entire edge I mean not really to hold the paper in place or anything because obviously it's held in place anyway but just really for a bit of decorative um you know detail really so um yeah I will be back okay so I'm back from the sewing machine and all I've done is stitched it exactly as I said so I've stitched you know this pocket and this one down and then I've just put this blue seam binding stuff um just down here because I thought, oh, that's going to, you know, just look pretty with this. So I'm just going to trim up, you know, the extra bits that I've got hanging out. So we've got that one. And then of course, across the bottom, let's just neaten that up where we've got the overhang of the sewing pattern paper there. Again, you know, I'm really not too worried if this is not straight or anything else, you know, cause I'd quite like to go for quite a grungy look now. <laughs> I might be a bit more worried here because my sewing machine, I've gone right off the edge. So I might have to even, you know, redo that on the sewing machine. We'll see. We'll see how we get on. I mean, I don't think it's likely to come apart, but yeah, we'll kind of just have, have to keep our eye on it a little bit. So, yep, that's kind of how that looks. And then I'm going to have some signatures in here. And like I say, this is then going to be a sort of wraparound cover. So, I mean, it looks quite pretty, doesn't it? And as I say, I'm just hoping to make it really, you know, super grungy and, you know, just super pretty looking. So I've got some of my food colour papers. So these are in kind of blues. And then I'm going to kind of mix it with as well some coffee dyed papers. Um, I'll put some book page in as well. So let's just get an assortment of paper that we're going to put inside. I've got some fly sheets here from some vintage books so we could have some of that in there as well which you know I mean all these things just add interest don't they and you know all kind of um add to the shabby chicness <laughs> I know there's no such word as that but you know the shabby chicness of of it so let's just fold that in right I'm just going to grab some coffee dyed paper so I've got an eclectic mix of stuff here so I've got some piano roll paper as well so hopefully we can incorporate that in here as well 
And then I've got lots of coffee dyed things. I've got some yummy coffee dyed um, lace and fabric as well. So I just put that to one side, might or might not use that. Got a doily, it's quite a small one, um, but hopefully we can incorporate that into the a bundle of pages as well. I'm just going to put this underneath so that it doesn't keep on kind of moving. And then, yeah, I'm going to obviously take my pages and just fold them in. Now, obviously, to me, this doesn't feel, you know, it's not going to be half, you know, folding the A4 sheets in half. Um, it's not far off half, actually, to be fair. It's kind of closer to half than I thought it was going to be, but, but not quite. So we're just going to kind of go over a little bit with them and we'll cut off kind of the edge. Uh, yeah. I might even do this as one of those torn edge journals. Um, yeah, maybe even just tear my tear my papers down. Should we do that? Because this looks like it, you know, it might just kind of suit that type of look, to be honest. Or I might not do it with all of the pages, but maybe just some. So I just want to get a really good mix of stuff, you know, really good mix of paper and pages and you know what have you really so we just yeah have something really interesting to look through so here's my a sheet of the blue so again just fold that in like that and then I'm just going to tear here like that. and yeah perhaps I won't tear them all down perhaps we'll have kind of a mix of you know some torn down and some not so let's put that there and then let's take another blue one and again fold it in and this one's a bit more bluey green but it's fine and then what I think I might do here is actually fold this over like that to make a little pocket here <clears throat> so yeah just trying to get a different you know mix of things really going on so got this one and perhaps we'll do another you know folded in pocket and to be honest you know they don't have to be the same size or anything so you know we'll just mix it up yeah and fold this one in Oops. and i might just just cut this one down so hopefully we're going to have some straight you know some straight edges some curly edges just yeah a bit of a variety going on so you know hopefully it's going to be a really interesting oh right hadn't noticed but this one's actually been damaged during the coffee dyeing probably best that I don't use this one sewing into the signature but if you have this happen with your coffee dyeing of course you can use it with other things you know please don't just throw it away because you know you don't always need the whole sheet so I will be able to use that but just not necessarily in this particular project so I'm definitely not binning it I'm you know keeping it for later and I will use it for something else or in something else so again just chop this down here <clears throat> okay right do we want any more blue or do we think that's enough with the blue Let's just see what we've got. So I'm just going to kind of assemble the papers a bit. And I want to sort of mix them up. I don't want like both of the ones with like the folded edge next to each other or anything like that. I want to have, you know, a bit more of an eclectic thing going on. So perhaps we'll have a bit of book page in there. And then perhaps we could incorporate the doily. And then another one of the coffee dyed sheets. Let's have the piano roll. Oops. I do find this piano roll really tricky to use. I mean, I absolutely love it, but it's very, very curly. So it makes it really, really hard to use it. Um, yeah, but it, it is super lovely. Right, so that's my signature, which to be honest, that's probably enough really, you know, in that signature because, you know, that's quite a lot of pages to be honest. and. You know by the time we actually kind of add a few things onto the pages it could well end up sort of you know bulky-ish even with just those few pages the only other thing that i probably would want to do is just have a couple of thicker pages and i know i talk about this quite often but i really like to have some thicker pages to hold like pieces of ephemera on or 
not really pieces of ephemera, but, you know, kind of um, uh, pockets and things like that. So, again, I've taken this. This is like a 200 GSM piece, and I've just folded that in like that. Okay, squish that down. Get my bone folder. Oops. And then just squish that down like that. And again, just going to fold this over to make a little pocket like that. Okay, oops. Squish that down. And then I'll have one more thick one as well, I think. So again, let's just see what I've got here. Might have a blue. Yeah, I've got a thickish blue one as well. So, you know, that's quite nice because we've mixed it up then and got sort of some and some. So again, just going to kind of go here and we'll again do like a pocket on this one as well. So again, just squish that down with the bone folder and then this time I will fold this in like that. Okay, Okay, looking good. Right, so I just want to now pop these couple on. So again, don't want it sort of all next to each other. So what I might do is pop this one in here, for example, and then have the this one in or on, on the outside, like that. Okay, so I mean, it's quite a thick signature, as you can see, you know, there's lots going on there. Now, the only thing probably that I want to trim down is that piano paper, um, because that just feels like it's overhanging a bit I'm just going to fold it back to stop it curling over I'm going to try and cut it down here so that I hopefully eliminate all of those bits that are oops you know where the well I guess they're the the music aren't they those kind of holes so yeah I've cut that down there let me see whether it's overhanging on the other side it is a bit so again just going to cut that down this side is going to be much trickier I'm not going to be able to eliminate those those strips but I you know I've made them smaller now so they're not so problematic anyway okay right so that's that yeah do I like the two blue next to each other oh, let me just check whether I might prefer this blue one maybe in the center of the signature I'm thinking yeah I think that would be better Okay, now, so I just need to decide whether I want to stitch this in here or whether we want to have it like elastic so that it kind of can pull in and out. Um, hmm. I think I might just have it on elastic. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's such a tough decision sometimes, isn't it? Uh, hmm. Right, let me get my... Um, embroidery thread and then I'll just stitch the signatures and then we'll decide. Okay so I've stitched the signature in I'll just kind of show you it's just stitched in with a three hole pamphlet stitch just in the middle there and that's obviously the edge and that's going to wrap around like that so I've got quite a bit of wiggle room there well not not wiggle room but growth growth room um for you know putting things in now obviously I'm trying to make this super grungy and super just you know like a basic basic journal really um I did also reinforce here with some lace so just so you can kind of see that um so yeah I'm just going to kind of get um you know stuck in really sticking <laughs> sticking things in get stuck in sticking things in um and you know just really using the most basic of things to be honest so i mean for instance here i've just got some coffee dyed um bits and pieces and these are from my little paris labels so it just happens that these three are blue and so just going to cut these down and i'm just you know just going to do some really basic things like maybe make some clusters and things like that just having a few kind of shades of blue type bits going on inside the journal so I'm hoping it's going to be you know quite heavily inked and um yeah quite heavily kind of coffee dyed and just like super grungy by the end so I'm just going to yeah go through and just add things you know just dotted around in here that will hopefully look just super super scrumptious by the end so um 
yeah i may come back and we'll do some more on camera or if not obviously you know then i will come back with the final flip through so i hope that you like it so far i mean it feels absolutely scrumptious i have to say this um yeah this cover it feels really 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 nice so yeah i hope you like it and i will see you guys soon thanks then bye